It is officially June, which feels insane to say. I don't know how we're already halfway through 2024, but it is officially time for the sixth monthly Q&A of this year. As always, if you want to be featured in the next Q&A, either just keep your eyes posted up over on the community tab or join the Discord because I'll let you guys know literally immediately as soon as literally anything is happening over there. I won't lie, I made a little bit of an oopsie daisy. So usually I post these things up about a week in advance just because that seems to be like the sweet spots and I there's enough time for everybody to get their questions in. But I kind of forgot to do that and I literally posted this up only like two or three days before this video so we don't have as many questions today but we still got some good ones regardless so i really do apologize about that as always regardless we'll go ahead and kick things off with the discord questions the first one coming from hardcore alex who asked what was the most weird slash funny comment you have received well considering the fact that i've been uploading on this channel for about four years now i've got some crazy comments so i'll narrow this down to the most uh, funny recurring comment i guess or the most common comment that i've received from different viewers that being the fact that <laughs> so many people compare me to FaZe Jeff. I don't know if it's something about the way that I talk or the, the way that my talking sounds. In these more like chill sit down Q&A videos, it doesn't come out as much, but I guess it's just something about the way that I speak whenever I'm making like my Call of Duty videos or other like gaming videos, for example. Again, I don't know if it's just something about like my, the inflections of my voice or like the speed at which I talk or if it's something else like that, but yeah. I always take it as a compliment though, because Jeff, he's like, he's the goat man when it comes to like Call of Duty content, even being like remotely compared to him in any way, even if it isn't like because of the content itself, but even just because of how I sound, I mean, like, I, I take that as a compliment. Again, Jeff's the GOAT. The next question comes from Ryan Revenges, who asks, do you play Brawl Stars? See, I, I I did. I played it, like, once or twice, but it's not one of those games that I play consistently. You know, the, I don't really play a whole lot of multiplayer games consistently. Like, for MMOs, it's a bit of a different thing. Like, I'll dive into those from time to time. Like, I still play DC Universe Online. But when it comes to other multiplayer games, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, I'll always dive in and try a new multiplayer game, but the only multiplayer of the game that I really play like religiously would be like Call of Duty. When it comes to multiplayer games, that's just that, you know, that that game is my thing. It doesn't matter what game is out that year, I'm gonna know life into oblivion. Obviously, there's other like multiplayer games and games with other, you know, like multiplayer elements that I've no liked or played a ton or still play a ton. But, you know, regardless, when it comes to like newer games like that, it has to really be doing something special to really, like, draw me in and keep me playing. And, uh, Brawl Stars, I had fun with it, but, again, I played, like, once or twice. I was like, yeah, it's a cool game, but I'm going back to Call of Duty. The next question comes from Pixter4900, who asks, How would you rate Modern Warfare 3 out of the recent COD games gameplay and content-wise? So... Content wise, uh, when you say recent Call of Duties, I assume you mean since MW 2019, since that's kind of like when the new era of Call of Duty started. So I would say content wise, this is easily the most content supported Call of Duty that we've had since this new era has started in a way. So <laughs> this is really interesting. On the Warzone side of things, it seems like the content has been basically as consistent as ever. Just, you know, Warzone, that's kind of like their bread and butter. They're always kind of pushing stuff out over there. But for MW3, this is really interesting. So, for, in terms of zombies offerings, ever since this, like, new era of Call of Duties began, Cold War, we, uh, there was a lot of content drought. So, for the content that we got, it was really substantial. And by the time that the game ended, we were just, there was so much content to go through. In other words, Onslaught, the other side modes, Outbreak, the four round-based experiences, especially with something like Onslaught. That's essentially, like, 20-plus zombie maps if you want to kind of look at it that way. I know that's kind of cheating, but I mean, like, still, there's a lot of variety and stuff to play there, so we had a lot of content there. Multiplayer was pretty content-rich, so I feel like Cold War would probably be, like, second up in terms of just, like, sheer content that we had by the time the game was done. But in Modern Warfare 3, in terms of launch content, there was a decent amount of zombie stuff to do, but the only issue is, or I, I guess, like, the only caveat to that is is it was a lot of missions that kind of just involved you like going back into the open world over and over and over and over again with like very specific requirements i guess like you know uh yeah kill a zombie with like dead wire or kill this many zombies with this thing or like kill certain mercenaries with this thing whether you're talking about the camo grind or like the actual story missions themselves a lot of them did kind of just come down to busy work which in a way you could kind of chalk up to being like artificial replayability even though there was a lot of like you know you had like the different story missions and stuff like that but they've uh, which they've gone on to continue to add in post-launch support the only issue is 
use that is that, you know, with a lot of the post-launch stuff that they have out as the game, sure, we got stuff like, you know, the Dark Eater Rifts and the Elder Rifts and stuff like that, and, and that stuff's cool and all. But the content that they have added just hasn't really felt... <laughs> I don't know, like as substantial as something like a new ROM based experience would, you know, like e even when they added stuff like the Act 4 missions, when we got the new missions like Countermeasures and Union and stuff like that, and there was a lot of cool stuff in those missions, I won't lie. Even going back to the first Act 4 mission that they added with uh, Bad Signal when you follow like the new Dark Ether Worm and stuff like that, you know, it's really cool, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you're gonna play it once, and when you do play it once, that whole play session is only gonna last like, what, maybe 30 minutes to an hour tops or something like a ROM based experience is like, it's infinite really re replayable and to a certain extent i would assume that more con or more effort probably went into like a round based map in like cold war versus uh, i don't know coding one of these missions which it's usually just kind of made up of like scraps of code as is like okay you're escorting a thing well that's already a contract in the game so all they had to do was kind of like transfer the code from that contract over to this so in the zombies aspect uh, i don't know i feel like towards the beginning of the game they were doing really good but now it's kind of just down to like not only a skeleton crew that's working on the zombies updates which you know we already know just kind of like from things that we've heard from behind the scenes from some of the developers but also, it's just pretty obvious, right? Like, we're getting very skeletal up updates at this point with very not substantial content. Yes, we've gotten some new schematics, some new missions, and some new things here and there, but it's just been very scattershot and not very consistent. So as far as Zombies is concerned, I would say it's hit or miss. We've gotten more support than we did back in something like, say, Call of Duty Vanguard when it came to the Zombies aspect of things, but uh, I don't know. Tor by, by the time that the game's over, when it's all said and done retrospect, uh, we'll, 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 we'll have to see. I, that's one that I'll have to come back to. But in terms of multiplayer, no. Uh, multiplayer has blown every single other recent Call of Duty out of the water when it comes to it comes to just sheer content and support. The amount of weapons, way more than any other Call of Duty in recent years. When it comes to multiplayer maps, dog, we had six 6v6 maps in season three alone. Y'all remember Modern Warfare 2 where there was that one season when we got like what two or three maps and like one of them was a remake? Yeah, dog, literally again. Season three, we had like six brand new maps alone. Season one and two were also jam-packed with content, not to mention all the new modes, return modes and, and, and you know even new innovative stuff like the new uh get high mode that they added during like the whole 420 event like that mode was insane and that's the kind of stuff that we haven't seen from call of duty in years because like well yes they do do fun quirky wacky stuff like that it's been a while since we really seen them dabble into like the Dude, what am I even playing territory like they did there? Not to mention all the smaller stuff you can go for inside of the game, like with the armory unlocks and different things that you can do and different events that they've had in the game. Like, oh my gosh, they've had events like what? Every one or two weeks? How many videos have I made this year? If you go into my Modern Warfare 3 playlist, literally like every other video is... I unlocked da 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 camo because there's always camos and things to go for and they just add the weapon prestiges to the game so you got like the one trick camo and now the molten obsidian camo and then seasons five and six are going to be bringing even more weapon prestige camos to, in the, into the game to grind for the amount of support and content just on a content front alone in modern warfare 3 has been absolutely ridiculous in the best way possible and then when it comes to the gameplay i mean like <laughs> The, the gameplay is amazing in terms of like the movement and just you know i mean it's the mw engine everybody knows the mw engine feels great but this game obviously mw2 is going for a bit of a slower more tactical realistic approach in terms of the movement you know even when you were attack sprinting it kind of just felt like the normal sprint here in modern warfare 3 when it came to the aiming and the shooting it was a bit slower again a bit more realistic even when you cranked up that ads speed you know when you crank up the ads speed especially with the aftermarket parts in mw3 you know you go from like you know just like normal hip fire to like ads just literally instantly whereas in mw2 you know you kind of had to like pull it up you know just for a second get ready to shoot and i'm not necessarily saying that one thing is better than the other you know i i loved modern warfare 2 and i love modern warfare 3 they're just two different feeling games that being said modern warfare 2 always kind of gave me the vibes of like call of duty ghosts where it's like you know the, the, the maps were a bit more expansive you know things were just a bit slower overall you know even things down to like the slide for example where everything just kind of you know just felt a bit more tactical i guess just you just kind of felt like there was a bit more weight to it whereas modern warfare 3 just feels like advanced warfare minus the jetpacks and again that's obviously not a complaint because i'm absolutely loving it next question comes from trank who says what games have you been playing through lately and how are you liking them oh my goodness okay so i ended up beating what was it 17 games in may i literally document the games that i beat like every time that i beat a game i just like you know i write it down to like my notes app and i also have like another 
another thing backed up on like a Google Doc sheet just so then in case I ever lose my phone or like lose access to that notes app for whatever reason that I can also just have like another way to keep track of everything but I've been playing through a ton of amazing games this year you know always going through the backlog but also going back to some nostalgic classics from my past like you know uh, I've been on my PS2 a lot lately just looking up on my shelf I've been reaching for Burnout Dominator because that's a super nostalgic one for me about uh, back in the day me and my parents used to play it all the time so let's screening it one of the fondest memories from my childhood is booting up that first track and hearing Avril Lavigne's girlfriend playing and the funniest part is that game literally had that song but in like literally every single language they had it like Japanese Spanish English and I don't know how to actually sing the songs in the other languages but I, I you know I can still just kind of like hear it in my head you know what I mean where it's like you turn it on it's like sometimes it's the English version like hey hey you you I could be your girlfriend you know doing that thing and then sometimes you turn on it's like hey hey yo yo I could talk to Bunda. it's like oh oh I mean it's still jams but I've been all over the place I've been playing some games on my Wii U I've been playing some games on my PS2 I've been playing some others on my 2DS my PS Vita like I was just going back and playing uh, Mario Golf World Tour a little bit ago on 2DS just because I was like you know what well, why not you know it's a great game I love Mario Golf and if you guys have never played the one from the Game Boy back in the day that was actually like it was literally you know you when you think of Mario Golf right like you just think okay you play as Mario characters and you golf but no the one from the Game Boy back in the day was literally like a full-on RPG I highly recommend it if you haven't played it but also if you want something a bit more modern then yeah Mario Golf World Tour on 3DS or 2DS I know I was saying 2DS just because that that's what I play on I just there's something about that form factor man because like obviously you know I still go back and play my in fact I was literally just playing my DS Lite like a day or two ago. That original DS design with the flip screens and the clamshell and everything like it's iconic. I love it, you know, even with the 3DS and stuff like that. But there's something about the 2DS where it really gives me those super nostalgic like Game Boy vibes while also being like a DS and it's also in 2D because I never used the 3D stuff. It just kind of like gives me a headache and just kind of makes my eyes feel weird. I don't know. I got the old eyes. Also, I'm sorry if you saw me picking my pinky nails kind of giving me some trouble right now. But anyways, yeah, I just kind of like mainly play on like my 2DS model there. So I was playing that. I've also been on my PlayStation Vita playing some Black Ops Declassified because uh, thankfully there is still people playing that game so I'm able to get on there and you know it literally doesn't matter what time I get on the game you know I load up, load up a TDM and I'm still able to play it on there and it's just like I don't know the nostalgia of playing that game on the PS Vita just because I remember when that game first came out and I was like Oh my gosh, it's literally like Black Ops 1 on the go. And obviously, it wasn't that. It was more of like a spin-off game. There was a lot of differences to it. And interestingly enough, there was even like Modern Warfare 3 weapons in there. But, you know, between the campaign, which was admittedly a bit different and felt more like strung together Spec Ops missions and was relative, relatively short, you know, it was still a lot of fun going through that. Then you had the Hostiles mode, which was essentially MW3 survival. You know, I wish we could have got zombies in that game, but, you know, it is what it is. And then multiplayer. Again, it's still alive to this day. And playing it now, you yeah, it's just as much of a blast as I remember it being. It's just, again, Black Ops on the go. So that's been a lot of fun re uh, returning to. Oh, and I just played a Game Boy game for the first time uh, the other day. So you guys may remember the Lego Island games from back in the day on like the PS1. And they even released uh, the second one on like the GBA. And I was familiar with that. But I remember a while ago, I had picked up the Game Boy Color version of LEGO Island 2. And I was thinking in my head, like, wait, there was a Game Boy Advance version. So it's probably just, you know, along those lines, you know, I, I just kind of like stuck to the Game Boy Advance version, which in itself was different from the PS1 version. So, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, there's like two different versions there. But no, the Game Boy Color version in itself was like a third completely different version so i went through and played that and it wasn't that long it took me like an hour maybe a little bit over that i think but dude the only way i could explain it it was like the exploration parts of like classic pokemon games you know obviously the game itself wasn't you know pokemon in terms of like going out and catching pokemon and stuff like that but a lot of the again exploration aspect where you're like roaming around the map or hopping on your skateboard going around talking to people trying to catch the brickster like it was just uh, it was such a nostalgic fulfilling just charming joyous experience while i was sitting there playing and smiling like a goofball the whole time with the chiptune soundtrack playing in the background and the beautiful graphics in that game man it's kind of like pixel art-esque with like sprites and stuff like that but it's also trying to look kind of 3d-ish at the same time again kind of like classic pokemon games so it was just except it was a bit you know obviously classic pokemon was a bit more, more like pixel art but this game in particular was definitely more just like trying to kind of be 3d but not exactly but that one was a lot of fun. So if you're ever looking for a game where it's just like a quick but fun, charming, and nostalgic experience, I can definitely recommend LEGO Island 2 on the Game Boy Color specifically. I mean, the Game Boy Advance version and the PS1 version are also, you know, two completely different versions, which are also a lot of fun, and were probably the ones that people played the most, but the Game Boy Color version... 
probably the most underrated and unknown version of the game. So again, it's also a quick playthrough. So I can recommend it if you guys haven't played it before. But like I said, I beat 17 games in May alone. So, you know, I'm always playing through new games. But usually how it goes is like once I beat one game, I'm diving straight to the next. You know what I mean? Like once I see the credits roll, I'll like... Take the rest of the day to chillax, maybe play some Call of Duty, watch some anime, but when I wake up the next morning, alright, we're diving into the next game. I'm just, I'm always fiending for the next adventure, whether it's a replay, whether it's, you know, something I want to knock off the backlog. I'm always looking for that new experience. And when I'm not playing through a single player game, well, then I'm probably just binging Call of Duty. Now we're moving over to the YouTube comments. <laughs> the first one comes from uh, Miggle Q Smith, who asks, how many pairs of socks do you own, and which is your favorite? I probably own, like, seven pairs of socks at most, maybe, like, eight. Maybe, maybe nine. I, I mean, the ninth pair, though, they have so many holes that I don't even know why I still have them. So, like, probably, you know, less than ten. And if I'm going to be honest, my favorite ones are the ones I'm wearing right now where they're, like, black and gray, but they're also long. I don't know. Like, I'm fine with, like, heel socks or uh, is that what they're called? Heel socks. But... I live in Florida, it's getting to the summertime, so when I'm outside running with my shorts and stuff like that, you know, mosquitoes start eating up my legs, so I kind of like long socks, kind of like protects my ankle, my shins a little bit better. Though the one thing I will say about heel socks is it, it's nice, you know, just it keeps your legs a bit cooler, so they're not so just, I don't know, you, you know what I mean? Like when you get done running or working out when it's hot outside and you're wearing long socks, I don't know, between like the sweat and the hairs on your legs, I don't know, man, it just starts to get a little weird. The next question comes from my stepdad who asks, if you had one superpower, what would it be and how would you go about helping people? Okay, so there is two different superpowers that I could name for this. So uh, if I could have one superpower that I could just use for me, that would be invisibility just so that I could do things and people wouldn't know, like that would be awesome. But if I was also trying to like help people at the same time, then I would say super speed just cause like how many times have you seen something where it's like, you could have avoided that if you could have just been a little bit faster or maybe even like the ability to like slow down time or just just do something like that right just something that either gets me to them faster whether it be through slowing down time or just being faster myself you see a kitten about to get squashed by a mac truck just super speed over there save the kitty you save the day everything's fine you see some old lady about a trip over the curb super speed over there make sure that doesn't happen you know what i mean like i i know that might be like a basic answer but that, that's my genuine answer like just like super speed or slowing down time and furthermore that would be beneficial to you like how many times have you been out doing something whether it be like shopping driving home from work on your way to work on your way to just anywhere or maybe you know maybe it's one of those times where like it just hits you really bad you're sitting there whether it's a full bladder or whether it's you know the other end and you're like all right i need a bathroom and i need it now super speed would allow you to get to that bathroom as soon as you need it and let me just tell you something right now as a beef and bean burrito connoisseur that that would be a very useful ability to have. And finally, the last question coming from Cheese20044 saying or asking, uh, I've been saying for all of you, and I'm pretty sure I've done this in other videos too, where I say, this person says, when really I should be saying, you know, asks. So Cheese asks, have you ever heard of the show Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Yes, I have. And for those that don't know, that is a, like, I, I guess we call it like a sitcom or just, you know, one of those shows back from like the late 90s, early 2000s. I do remember that show. Then they also ask, and bro, the new Garfield movie released, are you gonna watch? So this is something that they actually asked in the last Q&A about if I was going to see the new Garfield movie. And yes, I do plan to watch it. Uh, not going to see it in theaters because I believe it's in theaters right now. I don't know. Some movies go straight to streaming services. Others go to theaters. I believe that's one that went to theaters. But movie theaters just give me too much anxiety. But as soon as it, like, whether it's on a streaming service or whenever it's out on Blu-ray, preferably I want to pick it up on Blu-ray or DVD. I'm old school. I don't care. Dog, I'll still watch VHS tapes. As soon as it's able to be watched at home in some way, then I'm going to watch it. I'll talk about this in the last Q&A, but I just unironically love Garfield. Like, growing up, I used to love the cartoons, uh, the live-action movie from back in the day. I even still have the one game, Garfield Gets Real, that I play on my DS. Like, I genuinely just love Garfield. So, yeah, I'll be checking it out as soon as I can. But anyways, that's all the questions that I got for this Q&A. So, again, if you want to be featured in the next one, either just keep your eyes posted up over on the community tab or join the Discord server, which I have linked in the description of literally every single video, because I'll let you guys know over there as immediately as soon as literally anything is happening. But, anyway, as always, Master Shout out to all the Patreons and channel members. Thank you all in the low ball of tier. Make sure to thank you all in the mid ball of tier. My last game is Adam and Major Shut the Tone T tier. Run events. I'm Lil Cheese Girl. Thank you guys so much, guys, for Little Legends. I love you. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. See you tomorrow. I love you all. Peace.